both YouTube and Instagram. So I'm going to give everybody a second to come on in. This is part five, part five of the five part series where we talked about adding nutrients to your soil using everyday items that you might throw away or things that you might not think about. Like today, you may just throw down the drain. So I'm going to give everybody a few minutes while I still kind of adjust both so that I don't have to look too far off. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and get started. Okay. I try to put YouTube and Facebook like side by side so I'm not like really obvious with looking back and forth. So y'all come on in. Um, while I'm giving a chance for everyone to come on in on YouTube as well, uh, let's go ahead and get some of the housekeeping out the way so that we can go right into it. Um, so the first thing is if you are new to gardening, you know someone who's gardening, uh, someone said they were interested in gardening, let them know to download the five tips to a flourishing garden. Um, that's an ebook. I will make sure that I link it in the description um, on YouTube and then it is in our bio on Instagram. Also, if you want to be notified when we go live, when we have specials, when we have freebies, um, when we're offering new courses and classes, uh, make sure you text the word Let's Grow, L E T S G R O W, to 474747. That's Let's Grow to 474747. Also, make sure, hello, Jewel, how are you? Make sure you like and share this content because um, if you're new to joining our five part series, we were discussing everyday items that you can use that will build your soil. You will hear me say time and time and time again, it's all about building your soil. Once you start building your soil over your gardening journey, you will start noticing a big difference in your plants and you will start noticing a big difference in like pests and diseases and different things like that. But you have to build your soil and you can do it and you can do it over time, but just be aware of some of the things that we normally just kind of like throw away, put in the trash, we can now start to use them and put them right back into the soil and build those nutrients right back up. So we are going to get into number five. This is the last part, uh, number five of the five part series. I thought about this. So let me just say this first, y'all. It's so many ways to build the soil. And as we've been going over this series, y'all have been putting some good things in there. It's just so many things that we can use to build the soil. But this one, I was doing this the other day and I said, this is such a great way. So as we continue to harvest our um, plants and things like that. So what I did the other day is we harvested a bunch of green beans we harvested a bunch of cow peas. We harvested uh, some okra. So I'm not going to use them to, I wasn't going to use them immediately. So a lot of times when I harvest things from the garden, what I'll do is I will prep them to freeze them. And the way I do that is I will blanch um, the vegetables like the peas, the green beans, the okra. I will blanch them for a few minutes and then I will put them, uh, I'll shock them to stop the cooking process. So I'll put like them in cold water, dump some ice on them. But here is the thing that you could do. That water that you use to blanch for those few minutes, let it cool and you can put that back into your soil. Because if you think about it, when you cook greens like back in the day when we used to cook i mean i still cook greens but back in the day um they referred to the the liquid in the in the leafy greens whether it was kale collards mustards turnips they referred to that as pot liquor and a lot of times they would give that to people when they were sick when they were coming down with the cold because it had so many nutrients in it so that's like the same concept when you blanch vegetables to put up 
So our peas that we're harvesting, our, um, our okra, those are putting nutrients in that water that we're using to blanch. And we can let that cool or you can put it up. I mean, you can, you can let it cool, put it up until you need it, or you can let it cool and go outside and put that back into your soil because those nutrients that were used, um, the nutrients in the water when you blanch, those can go right back into the soil. And that's what I was doing the other day. Like I immediately let it cool. Really the next morning I went out there, some of my container pots, because container pots, you have to water them a little bit more often than versus in ground. We've been getting lots of rain, but over the last two days, um, I have had to still go out there and water the container pot. So I use that same water that I use to blanch my peas and my beans and my okra. I use that same water and I went out and I watered my pots in the container because it's still some nutrients that are coming, getting into your soil. That is what it is all about. And like I said, think Beyond the five things that we've talked about, um, those videos are still up if you want to go and look at it. Hello, Angela. How are you? If you still want to go back and look, um, think about the things that we've already talked about. But it's just so many, so many more things. So now when you're in the kitchen and you may be getting ready to throw something away, start thinking about, okay, can I use that to build my soil back up? And that's exactly what I did. Like all the time, I think, and, and I think we talked about this either last week or the week before, where get your family involved because now if my family cooks eggs, they'll say, hey, where's the bowl for the eggshells? Because we save the eggshells and we crush those up in the food processor. And so if you're blanching some vegetables, think about that liquid. Just don't pour it down the drain. Let it cool and use that and feed your soil and feed your plants with those same things because that's what it's all about. I'm telling y'all, it's all I'm it's I didn't realize it seriously until I started doing it, just really focusing on the soil. And once you start focusing on that soil, you will see a big difference. Now, don't get me wrong, it's it's a it's a journey over time. Like I still can look at some of the older parts of the garden and some of the newer parts of the garden and just kind of see what's going on. And remember, I also told you last week in the fall is when we really get our soil tested, see what's lacking, see what may be too much, see what we may need to add, and then we'll go from there. But it's just a lot of things that we just continue to throw away that we can use it to build the soil back up. And I think I shared with you that we also do vermicomposting. So a lot of the things that I normally throw away, I will go out and I will give it to my worms. That's what vermicomposting is. It's taking those food scraps, taking the paper, taking the leaves, taking the different things. And what they're doing it is they're breaking it down and they are turning it into nutrient rich uh, worm castings. And we use those worm castings in the garden now, I, I share it with you. I don't have like a big operation going of like the compost. I really would like to do that. Um, but we do have a lot of, you know, different uh, animals that come and somehow get in the backyard and visit us. Uh, mainly the raccoons and the possums, <laughs> things like that. So I just want to be careful. Uh, but vermicomposting is the best for me and like in my area because everything is enclosed. Um and the animals can't get to it. So you have to think about things like that too. But um, think about when you're cooking now, even like with the pasta, pasta water. So normally you would throw pasta water right down the drain. Let that pasta water cool and then go and, and feed your plants with it. But I definitely do that when I'm blanching, when I am blanching all of my vegetables. And we've been doing a whole bunch of blanching of our peas and beans and okras, and I'm still gonna do some more blanching. So we're doing a whole bunch of blanching of vegetables to store for the winter in the freezer. And while I'm doing that, I'm saving that water and I am putting it back into my plants, back into the soil because they still have nutrients in them 
as well. So if y'all do some blanching, save that water. If you cook some pasta, save that water, you know, and, and feed your plants with it. So the five part series, we're going to leave that up for a little while longer, um, just in case you missed it. So it's just five parts, five different things that you can, that you normally use in your kitchen, that you normally throw away, that now you can start thinking about and you can just start telling yourself, hey, I can build, I can put that back into the garden. I can put that back into the container. And that's what I do with a lot of the water um, for the blanch. And we just put it in our containers um, that we have like on the patio and just put that water back in there. So I will go through the comments right now. I see a few comments popping up. Again, welcome to all that's joining us on Instagram and YouTube. So if you see me going back and forth, we are broadcasting simultaneously. Make sure you text the word Let's Grow to 474747. 47 47. That's Let's Grow to 474747. 47 47. I do see some new faces. Uh, my name is Ayana of Southern Entertainment, and our biggest goal is just to teach everything. Like if you're thinking about starting a garden, if you are new to gardening, we just want to give you some gardening tips, tricks, and techniques to help you on your garden journey. I just hear so many people um, say that um, they tried to grow or they killed something. And then a lot of people's like, oh, I can't grow. But seriously, last year when everything happened, people start panicking. Um, a lot of you who have been following me, you know that I kind of started out just showing the garden, showing what we were growing. But after last year, I was like, you know what? You really need to start sharing some of these gardening tips, tricks, techniques. Share this with people. So first of all, they don't get frustrated when something dies, okay? Um, they don't want to give up. They don't keep telling their self that they can't grow because the number one thing I will tell y'all is it does start with your mindset. And I know you may have heard that before. It starts with your mindset. Like if you kill a plant, because I'm still killing them now, you just can't say, I can't grow anything. Oh, I'm going to give up. Like that's not the right attitude to have. I always use the example. Think about when you first learned how to ride a bike. Now, there may have been some people that got on that bike and just took off, but I know I had some skint knees, y'all. I kept falling off. I probably sprained my ankle. Like it took me a few times to get it. And that's, I use that to reference gardening. Like it's, I'm still learning new stuff every day. Some of the things that I learned, and then there are also some new and improved ways that people are gardening and you can research and you can learn but that is what this garden community is all about. Like you will just see in the comments, people give so many good ideas about how to um, nourish your garden, how to grow your garden, what to look for. Also, let me pause right here because we have a pest control blueprint. So what I want you to do, um, I promise YouTube, I have not been on my game with um, putting the descriptions in, but that is on my to-do list this weekend where I'm going to go in and put in everything that I told y'all I was going to put in. I don't know. The week just keeps going by, but I already have all of the links set up on Instagram, but YouTube, don't worry. I'm going to go and put the links in all of the, the descriptions, but download the, the five things you can do to control pests in your garden, because that's one of the, the most common questions that I get. And what I will tell y'all, I was on a Zoom call last night and uh, it's a, a bunch of ladies. It's a great Zoom call, a great community, but I was on there and it was like eight o'clock at night and they were like, what are you doing outside? And I had to actually spray because um, we have some bush beans um, and they don't get big, but we had some worms and I found them. I found them dead in the act. And so we had to go out there and just do a spray. And I always like to spray at night because I don't want to harm the beneficial insects, the bees, the butterflies. And so we we kept getting that question. So we came up with a, it's a free download, just five things that you could do to control like the pest in your garden. Because I always say it's not if you're going to get them, it's probably when. If you don't get them, 
bravo to you, okay? <laughs> bravo to you, but uh, that's one thing I was sharing with the ladies last night. We have a really big problem with squash bugs, but the five things that I'm talking about is going to help you just kind of not get overwhelmed, not get frustrated because it happens. It happens to all of us, but that's why we're talking about building the soil because you'll notice over time um, you want to build a the soil and you want to build your garden so that the garden and the plants and the pollinate, like all of that is going to be like one ecosystem working together. So the way it's supposed to work is, you know, when pests come, hopefully the pollinators or hopefully some of the beneficial insects can take care of that. But until then, sometimes we have to do things um, in the meantime so that they don't ruin all of our, you know, crops, whether it's fruits, vegetables, or herbs. And sometimes you can have some things that will decimate your plant. I'll give you an example. I keep looking at, and I'm going to find them. I keep looking at my tomato plant. I know it's a tomato hornworm out there because the top leaves, like they're being stripped. I know it is, but they're so good at camouflaging themselves. But I'm going to go out there. I, I go out there at different times and I'm looking out because I'm looking at the top of my leaves. I go out there at different times, but I'm going to find them. But when you have a, um, as nature continues to work, Nature will take care of that hornworm, you know, um, with the parasitic wasp being able to implant the hornworm. So that's what it's all about. Like we're building a garden. It's a journey and we're building healthy soil. But I just want you all to think about it like this five part series is to help you think about instead of keep putting things in the trash. Put things that can also just go right back into the earth, right back into the ground, right back into your garden. That's what we want to do. And I'm telling you, things like the pasta water, blanching your vegetables, using that water to put back into the soil, that is like, to me, is like a, a natural fertilizer by doing that. So I'm going to go through the comments really quick um, because I, I owe YouTube so many videos, y'all. I know I've been doing lives, but I owe y'all some videos. <laughs> I owe you a deadheading video, and I'm also looking out the corner of my eye. Um, if you hear the weed eater, my husband is weeding, but I have to, I have to kind of keep my eye on him because he will weed eat some things and say he didn't, he didn't know, he didn't, he didn't realize that's, that's what he was doing. <laughs> Because I have some plants like right on the edge. And I know he's trying to get done because it is hot out there. But it's been raining. Like literally he cut the grass like four days ago. And I told like it, it, it got high. But it only gets high in certain places by the garden. Which helps me. I mean that lets me know that something good is going on in the garden. Because it grows like really quick uh, certain places by my garden. But I do have some smaller plants that um, as I'm thinking about it now, I had some zinnias planted like right on the end. Now I'm starting to think three of them have came up, but I, I direct sowed them, which mean I put the seed directly in the ground. But I had a whole row and I only see three. And something's telling me he took that weed eater and whacked the other. <laughs> because you know, when you start, when you direct sow, if you don't watch it, like, he, he probably thought that the zinnias was a weed. And it, it's planted, like, towards the edge. But I have the edges, like, blocked out. I'm telling y'all, on YouTube, if you're on Instagram, go see us on Southern Entertainment. And all of the uh, all of y'all on Instagram, go watch our stories. I had a little rant today um, because I was cleaning up, y'all. I'm telling you, my family, there's something else. They do the most. They really do the most. And I, I just said to myself today, I said, surely I cannot be the only one that is experiencing this. It's no way that I am experiencing what they are doing to me. So after this, y'all go watch the stories. It's funny. And like I, like I said at the beginning, disclaimer, it's nothing that I have not told them. And they already know it. They already know it. So hello, all of you that are joining us. Um, thank you so much, Jewel. Are most fruit peels good for the garden? You know what, Jewel? I have... Okay, so we did talk about banana peels. Now, I did see where citrus peels are also uh, good for the garden as well. Now, I have not... What I will tell you is I have not used them. 
I do use the banana peels and that's why one of our gardening friends um, said to dehydrate them as well but sometimes I'll just like soak them or cut them up really fine and let the worms go ahead and you know do their thing as far as breaking them down apple peels I would say are very good uh, for the for the garden as well I would think apple peels and what you could probably do is take the apple peels if you have like a blender or something put a little water in there mix it up to break it down kind of fine if you're not composting now if you're composting you can put them right like on the compost or vermicompost and you can put them in there but I would just like break it down like with a food processor and just pour it right back in there um, and do it that way but I, I do know apple apple peels are really good um, for that we have used that hello Julia how are you yeah Jewel I'm telling you I got I know you put that comment because you probably know what I'm talking about. I do have to watch. Like I made sure I moved everything that I could out the way. Now I will tell you that the wind is blowing, but one of my uh, shepherd hooks is leaning to the side. And um, I already know what happened. I already know what happened, uh, but it's okay. I just wanted that grass cut because even though I had my boots on, y'all, I was just like creeping out in the garden because that's why they say you got to keep your grass cut, especially here in Southeast Georgia. Y'all know I have put on my Instagram, I have put on a lot of videos that we have Sammy the Snakes around here and I'm not very fond of them. I don't want to run up on them. Um, if they're going to do what they're going to do, let them do it in nature. Let them do them in the back, not in this yard, because that's a good way to get my adrenaline up and almost, you know, I, I just have to go lay down, stuff like that, um, especially after the one that we saw in the front yard. And a lot of times when they cut the ease way in the back, it's something that shakes some stuff and they just start coming out. So I, I have to keep the grass cut, but hopefully, uh, like I told a lot of y'all, I'm going to keep expanding this garden. You know, we've expanded, but I just want to make sure that as I expand is what I can handle. Um, and so that's a great tip. I always tell people do not do more than what you can handle. So I just want to make sure that as I continue to expand, just make sure that you can handle it, whether you're, you're gardening in a pot raised beds um, because it's no shade to no one and this happened to me years ago but I was out today and I saw someone they had a garden but I'm telling you the weeds were so high it was and I know they probably got like I did a few years ago where it just you just couldn't keep up and when you have a lot of rain it seems like the weeds grow way faster than your plants and I've been pulling weeds like all week long I would go out there I put on a timer because I, I still got a lot of weeding to do but I like to keep keep it weed free around from around my plants because the weeds want the same nutrients that your plants do so I at least try to get the weeds from around my plants because I don't want my plants having to fight for nutrients that the weeds also want as well so I, I do try to make sure I do that. Like I'll go out there, I put in, I put on a timer and I'll time myself. Now one morning y'all, I got hot. I got too hot out there and uh, I don't know, sweat was just dripping because it was just so humid out. It's so humid right now here in August. Like you literally do not have to go sit in a sauna. Just walk outside for a few minutes. But this is the thing I always tell people. You have to be careful. Um, and now I see what my grandmother used to talk about because they were, and y'all can put it in the comments if you know what, I'm, if, if you were raised up like this. It had to be really hot for her to cut on the AC. Like they had the window AC. No, no, um, what is it? No, like the, the AC like we have now. It was the, the window, what you put in the window, but you had... It had to be seriously, seriously hot. And now I see what she's saying because when it's hot and humid the way it is outside right now and when you walk into a cold house, 
if you're not careful, that's a combination to get you sick, to get you stuffy. It's like the air hits your throat. And so now I see what she means. Like, I'm like, oh my God, it's, it's like about to burn up in here. Like she didn't want a ceiling fan on. She didn't want any of that on. But it is a way that you can, as you get older, you can get sick that way from going outside hot and humid and keep walking back and forth like into a cool house, then go outside, then come in. I know it feels good, but you just got to be careful and you got to be careful how that air is blowing on you or blowing on your head or blowing on your throat um, like that because that's a good, a good way to get you a summer cold. So I just, uh, like what I'll do is I'll sit in the garage for a few minutes, you know, and just kind of cool down. But I'm telling y'all, I was out there the other day weeding and I was like, see, you're doing too much. And I had, it was just so humid. And I did have my water and I had my, um, I had my hat on, I had my long sleeves on and I had boots because as I go down to the further part of the garden, one of my coworkers told me about this and evidently they've migrated up here. I think, I don't know if she called them horse flies. I got to ask her again, but they're seriously big and they will bite you and it hurts. And they kept landing on me. And these are some different mosquitoes here, y'all. Okay. They don't care um, about your clothes. They don't care what you got on the other. That's probably why I got too hot because I had two pairs of pants on because I said, I'm tired of being bitten through my pants. But I, yeah, I got hot. That's a whole nother story. Now y'all see how I just got all off the top, <laughs> all off the top. We're talking about uh, building soil oak mite. Yeah, I'm telling you this one, like I was picking my butterfly pea flowers and it was the, but it just kept landing on me. And I'm like, will y'all just please leave me alone? Um, I'm telling you, I know if the neighbors were to see me and just not even hear what I'm saying, I know they think that something is wrong with me. I know they, I know they do because I'm out here doing this and I'm doing all of that. But I'm, I'm telling you, um, it's, it's just something. It's, it's, and okay. And so Desi loves GT said the oak mite. I don't, it's, it's like a big bug and it's just like lands in you. And I mean, it puts whatever it is and you really wep up. Like one time it got me right on my forehead and I was out there. I'm like, really? This is what we doing today. This is what we doing. We biting people. That's, you know, like go bite something. Don't bite me. But yeah, you will be itching. If y'all look at my kitchen, I got two bottles of alcohol because every time I come from outside, I'm steady having to rub down with alcohol. Okay. Now my mom says the green alcohol is the best, but I can't find green alcohol. So I just use the regular isopropyl alcohol. Okay. <laughs> I just, I can't, I can't even find green alcohol anymore, but she used to tell me the green alcohol is the best, but I can't find it. Um, thank goodness you don't have to water as much during the colder months. Yes. And that's why I'm not complaining because we've had like rain showers. And what I will tell you is that I have not had to water like the garden garden as much like with the uh, drip hoses or the soaker hoses. Now, the containers that are right here on the patio, I have had to go out there, especially the smaller ones, and water them um, for a couple of days. But it, it has. It's been great. But remember, when you get lots and lots and of rain like that, you also have to go back in. Um, and we talked about this. You also have to go back, back in and put the nutrients because with so much rain, it's going to drain those nutrients out as well. So I do have to do a... Um, I just have to start section by section and go back in and put the nutrients in, especially in our bush beans that we're growing. Um, we're getting another flush of the cow peas again. And um, all of our herbs are growing really good. Our peppers are coming on strong. Um, and I need to do, you know, I need to go ahead and do a liquid fertilizer of that. But we got rain coming like over the next three days, I think. So that's why I told my husband, please go out there and cut the grass because I just, I can't take it. I just, I can't take it. And this is what I'm going to tell y'all. Now, when he was um, stationed in Korea, don't, don't, don't get it twisted, y'all. Don't, don't get it fooled. Now, I would get out there and I would cut the grass myself because my grandfather owned a lawn care company um, when we were small. Like he would come pick us up in the van from school. So I know 
I have to get on him sometimes about how it's supposed to be done, but that's okay if he'll just cut it. But what it does is it takes me a lot longer to cut it because I'm very tedious. Now, he will get on that lawnmower and act like it's a go-kart, but you know what? It's saving me time, and I just, sometimes you just got to be like, you know what? Just, it's cut. It's, it's cut. Just, just leave it alone. Like, I will cut. I will weed eat. I will edge. And so minimum front and back and all of the stuff that I think I have to do but probably don't, it, it really takes me like five hours. So, um, and I timed myself before when he was in Korea. I'm like, oh, my gosh, it, it's taking me like five hours. But it looked really good. It looks good. It looked good. The whole year he was gone, it, it really, well, not like the whole year because, you know, in the winter months it stops. But, um, and I'll, I'll tell you, I had got someone one time to come out and do it and he did he did good the first time and y'all comment below if you've had this happen he did good the first time but the second time I was like mm-mm 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 mm -mm, no I'll do it myself I just I'll just do it myself <laughs> I'll do it myself um hello Yankee sister how are you how are you doing so um so yeah, in the cooler months, and y'all, I'm telling you, y'all comment below. Are y'all getting ready for fall? I'm going to do some stories on Instagram because seriously, no lie, I just planted a flat of, uh, what's 16 times eight? Whatever 16 times eight is, a flat of nothing but leafy greens, and they're all germinating. Seriously, like two days ago, they are all germinating inside, so I am getting so excited but remember, I said I'm not going to overwhelm myself this fall. I'm doing succession planting. So two, two weeks from now, I'm going to start another um, flat of it. But I'm just, I'm so excited. And that's why I always encourage you, find a seed company that you like. And it's, it's, it's probably about six seed companies that I know without a doubt great germination rate even if the seeds are like not this year like i'm trying to use up some of my older seeds and so what i did was i planted two per sale tray two per sale tray um and there's still a lot of them both are coming up so i do have like certain companies that i just absolutely love 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 to order from and then we're saving our own seeds. So I'm testing some of those because we've been doing a lot of seed saving. I just got finished um, saving some tomato seeds from the Cherokee Purple. We're saving our paprika seeds. So I'm trying to um, do a bunch of seed saving as well. But y'all know, just like the seeds we offered online, if I put them on there, I stand by them as far as the German, like I'm going to test them out before I put them on there, especially with ours. So um, I'm, I'm super excited about the fall, not only because of the cooler weather, but like you said, less watering, less pest diseases, uh, less pests, less diseases. And I love leafy greens. And y'all know I love my lettuce. So I'm going to, I'm going back to salads, y'all. I'm going back. Hello, Veggie Farm. How are you? Um, my friend and I were just talking about that. I don't know how we made it in the old days without AC. I'm telling y'all. And my grandparents used to call it the juice. They were like, I'm not finna waste this juice up. And we would just sit there. Um, we actually had church fans. Like if we just got too hot, um, it was like church fans on the back of the um, sofa that we just sit up there and we fan ourselves with. And I was just like, like maybe on a Saturday after because Saturdays were like the grocery shopping days for uh, my grandparents. And then when the heat, when the kitchen got like really heated, because every Saturday it was like they fry fish, they fry chicken, they make hot. I mean, it was just like, because everybody came over and ate. And so when it got like really, really hot, they would turn on the AC then. But it was only for a limited time now. You, it's not like it, like we have hours on auto. You know, like hours today, we have hours on auto. No, you, you're not turning the AC on auto and it's not finna run all night. Then you're gonna get it on long enough to cool off and get somewhere and sit down. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And then you're gonna turn the air condition off because uh, you know, my, my grandmother used to say, uh-uh, y'all ain't finna get me sick. And so that's why I see now, 
Like seriously, if you, and the way the vents are here in the kitchen, like if you come from outside with it humid and hot and mess up and sit and the AC comes down on your head like that, I'm telling you, y'all take it from me. That's a combination for a head cold. And I didn't understand it until I got, until I got older. Hello, King's uh, Tax Services 18. Oh no, your, my tomato plant died. What happened to it? What happened to it? And the only reason why I asked is because a lot of times you can get what's called like late season blight. Um, and it happens to all of us. Um, have y'all been getting a bunch of rain? That can make it. I'm telling I've been having to pull so many tomatoes. If y'all saw my stories yesterday on Instagram, um, we've pulled a whole bunch of tomatoes and we made tomato sauce because so much rain has been coming. It's been uh, making our tomatoes split. Um, I'm looking at some leaves now. Uh, King Tax Services 18 is one I'm going to have to pull. So I'm just going to pull off the, the tomatoes. And you know what? It happens. That's why I tell people it happens. But I'm so proud of you that you're growing. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. And it's so many different things that can, that can happen throughout the process. But that's okay. We're going to keep, we're going to keep growing no matter what. Um, hello, is it Hey Jen? Uh, we're getting ready for some nasty weather. I, Yankee sister, I think I saw, are y'all going to be, um, are you by like the New England area where you're going to get, is it the hurricane, the tropical storm? I saw a notification pop up on my phone where something is going to hit. Um, something is going to hit. So make sure you stay safe. Absolutely. I think I saw that. Um, and I think you're probably in that area. Hello, New Art Gardener. How are you? Yes, just drop more seeds. Okay. And then, oh, wow. So Yankee Sister has some leeks, onions, celery, rutabagas, dill, cabbage, kohlrabi, beets. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you are ready. You you are definitely ready. Yeah, let me tell you. I'll, you are ready. You, you're not going to have to even go to the grocery store. I'm telling you. You're not going to even have to go. You are not going to even have to go. That's amazing. That is so amazing. Uh, I think I left it outside too long. Yes, it rained. Okay, did it kept rain? Yeah, if it kept raining and kept raining um, and then maybe got hot. Yeah, it, it's so many. Let me tell you, King Tax Services, it's, it's, it's so many things like you know how people say like a perfect storm of stuff? Like it's so many things that can like cause the perfect storm, especially with tomatoes, you know, and like it could get too much water or it could get a fluctuation. Um, it could get like a fluctuation, like heavy rain and then hot, kind of like we are. Heavy rain, hot. And then it's just, I, I don't know. And then I know I've, I've been seeing people getting like the late season blight or maybe like a fungus from all the rain. But tomatoes, um, they do that. And what I can suggest is to try to get, especially if it was like late season blight or a, a wilt or something like that, try to get a variety that kind of fights against that. Because if I don't know if it'll make you feel any better. <laughs> but I had to pull uh, about three tomato plants, about three tomato plants this season. And I'm going to have to get ready to pull one more because when you see me looking there, I'm looking at the leaves and I don't know if it's because now here's the thing. Like if the leaves look sad, but if they pop back, if the leaves look sad, but they pop back in the evening, then I'm okay with that. It's because that, you know, our sun is a who is the heat. And it's the plant trying to conserve the moisture. But if it just keeps starting to look that and it's not popping back, not popping back in the morning, then yeah, something's going on with it. But yeah, you do have to plant some more lettuce seeds. Uh, we're starting a lot of our seeds inside. I will show y'all. As a matter of fact, now that I am learning how to make YouTube shorts, <laughs> I was doing like the Instagram story, but I'll also make a YouTube short um, because we have our leafy greens growing and we're starting to uh, start a lot of seeds inside. 
Um, so again, if you're not sure when you're supposed to start seeds, make sure you grab the seed starting masterclass. I'll put that in the link and then it's the deal of the month on my Instagram bio. Make sure you click on the deal of the month to get the special deal for the seed starting masterclass. But it just feels so good um, to be able to like get a jump start on the season and plant some of these fall vegetables. I'm going to be ready this year. A lot of times I seem, I feel like I'm behind. We're never behind y'all, but I just feel like this is such a hard month for me because we're getting our fall vegetables starting, but I'm telling y'all by next month, um, next month, like our, our tomatoes and our peppers, they're going to kick back up because it's so hot. A lot of uh, plants like the tomatoes and peppers, they don't like temperatures over 95. Like they'll be like, oh my gosh, just help me. Just help me. Help me get over. So once they get over that hump, when they survive, they really start flourishing. Last year, we still had peppers growing in November, but I needed to put somewhere for my leafy greens. But here's the thing, y'all. A lot of people have been pulling up their tomatoes and pepper plants, potting them, overwintering them, like in the garage or somewhere um, where it still, you know, gets light, and then repotting them the next year. Um, but we've been pulling them, so we'll we'll have to see about we'll we'll, we'll see about that. Um, let's go through here. No pumpkins this year. Oh no. Okay, can we start seeds outside and seeds start and come because it's still warm? I get those gnats when I start seeds inside. Yeah, the fungus gnats. That's what I was going to make on my story today. So really quickly, when we start seeds inside, we have that humidity dome on there. And when it gets about 50% germination, I take it off. And I take it off because you can get like what's called dampening off. And then the fungus gnats. I know exactly what you're talking. Know exactly what you're talking about, um, because a lot of times I I have those sticky traps on my grow rack, and the, all of that all of that can happen. But here's the thing: when you start them outside, depending on where you're at, let me just make that disclaimer. So a lot of our lettuce seeds, if I start them now, it's still kind of hot. And they may, they may potentially just start going to seed because it's so hot. Now, if you have somewhere that's shaded, it doesn't get a whole bunch of sun, then you could, or and it, it may be like covered, you could potentially start some of your fall crops outside. Now, in September, I know that if I run out of room inside, September, I really think I'm kind of in the clear um for starting seeds outside just in case i run out of room and i probably know i am and that's okay because i mess around and may build another grow rat <laughs> may uh build another one yes y'all please play for uh yankee sister okay so you are in that storm path that i saw the notification on okay got my generator got my food yes i have to move my pots outside all of my pots outside. Yes. So please pray for Yankee sister because um, I did see that and it sounds like that you are uh, prepped and that's the good thing. And I always, I always tell people, you know, make sure you have water. Uh, a generator is great just in case the power goes out. That's awesome. Make sure you have some canned goods at least. Um, but yeah, we are definitely praying for you, Yankee sister. I am, and I'm gonna keep note. Um, I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep following that um, as well, the path. But I, I pray that it just kind of, you know, goes like the opposite direction of you. I really, really do. Um, and if there's anything that you need, please reach out to me. Please reach out to me. You should be receiving something Monday. Maybe I think they said Monday at the post office. Um. Yes, please stay safe. Okay. And thank you for enrolling. Okay, Yankee Sister. Also, let me know how the seed starting class is. Thank you so very much. Um, let me know because we're always trying to build and just provide as much information as we can with the seed starting. I'm telling you, when I I just 
I just feel like my whole gardening world has arrived <laughs> when I can, you know, nothing wrong with getting transplants at the, the garden center, but I'm telling you, it's something amazes me when I can like start pink celery, <laughs> start some pink celery or just start certain things that I haven't seen. Um, I have some biodegradable cardboard planters to start seeds in house. Yes, yes, King Service, uh, King Tax Services 18. You got to start some seeds. I have fungus and that's on my indoor plants. Try those, uh, the yellow sticky, try those yellow sticky traps. I have those in some of my, um, I have them on my grow rack, but there's also, it is all natural and it is go to, oh my gosh, is it the gardener's workshop? She has something on her workshop where it's for fungus gnats and you just kind of put it, it's, you mix it up in water. The Gardener's Workshop, her name is Lisa. The Gardener's Workshop, so she had something for fungus gnats and it comes in a little pouch, you mix it up, but what you do is you mix it with water and you put it like on the soil. But you gotta remember, when I always tell y'all, it's not a one and done. You gotta keep doing that. But the sticky trap seems to work for me um, those yellow, they sell them yellow and they sell the blue sticky traps. And they have this little um, piece of wire that you just kind of stick them in and it sticks up and you'll start to see them. For some odd reason, they're attracted to them. But once they get stuck on there, they can't get off. And that helps me a lot. It, it, it really does. Because believe me, it was one season, y'all. My family was just doing this in the kitchen, just doing this. And I was like, I know, okay, I'm going to give it up under control. And I had so many seeds. But it was because that was me with the watering. You know, I was, I think I was over watering um, with those fungus gnats and then the fruit flies. It, it was a catastrophe. But they, you know, it's gone. They, they, stuck, they stick it out with me. My family, they do. They stick it out with me, but... uh they could tell you some stories. Um, I said broccoli seeds and some zinnias. Desi loves GT. I actually uh, ordered some broccoli seeds. Now, I'm not a broccoli fan, but my family likes it. So that's why I say grow what you like or grow what your family like. And so I'm excited. We've grown broccoli before. I'm super excited um, for the broccoli as well, uh, just, so they'll, just so they'll have it. But broccoli seeds are nice too. I like to watch them grow as well um and yes everyone on instagram yankee sister is definitely praying for you um we're all praying for you most definitely um mosquito bites try that too mosquito bites try that too okay oh i know what you're talking about those like is it the mosquito dunks uh desi loves gt is that what you're talking about maybe she could try that as well i think that's my problem over watering yeah um, there's some plant and, and King Tax Services 18, let me tell you, it's some plants that want to be left alone. It's some plants that want to be baby. You just got to figure it out. I have some house plants. I don't know what this house plant is, but if y'all have seen me in the uh, living room or like the office where I uh, work from, you have seen it behind me. When I tell you that's the great greatest plant, uh, one of my good friends, when she, they were getting ready to PCS, she couldn't take those plants with her. And she named them. One is Wilma and one is Wilbur. Wilbur and William. But when I tell you, they have not given, they don't like to be bothered. Just, I might, I might water them like maybe once a month. Maybe once a month. They just, they don't like to be bothered. They just want a little bit of light. Like they sit by windows and I've actually had to trim them up, but they just, I like those type of house plants that are just like, you know, give me a little water, give me a little light, leave me alone. But you do, you have, I'm going to tell you another one that I love too, the peace lily. The peace lily is another plant that's just like, I'm okay, give me a little light. Um, and it's actually starting to bloom again. Uh, but it's okay. And you just have to find those different plants that you can uh, kind of handle. Okay, I found yours. It's called Devil Vines. Okay, so I have to look that one up. I will look that one up to see. But yeah, um, most of our house plants are like non-fussy house plants because it's not that I forget. Um, and we have, we still have the pineapple plant. 
Now this plant right here, my daughter, she brought home. I don't know what this is, but I have to get on to her because this one is another one. I don't know what it's called, but it will let you know when it's time to water because it'll just droop. And I'm just like, I done told you to watch out. I said, now I'm not going to be watering your plants. That's what I told her. I'm not going to be watering your plants. You have to water them as well. But that's another one that so far it will tell you when it needs to be watered. I like those type of plants. Kind of tell you, okay, I'm ready. I'm ready to be watered. Um, let's see here. I meant to say move my pots close to the house. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I, I understand. Let me tell you, Yankee sister, I totally, when I tell you, I totally understand. I do. I I do. And it's a, it's a lot of work prepping, like being in, being in an area where we get like hurricanes and tropical storms all the time. And a lot of it is because the, of the wind. Y'all remember a few years ago where the wind took out, just the wind alone took out a lot of our plants. Like it was when we came back the year we had to evacuate, it was just, I almost just like broke down and was just like, oh my God. It was, I think the wind is what does like so much damage. Like the wind is nothing to play with. And then like the power lines and and the things like that. And see, we, I, I don't know about you, Yankee sister, but we have a lot of trees in the back of us. And so like even the other day when the wind was blowing, it's a lot of branches that um, my husband went out there. Let me make sure y'all, I think he got them up, but it's a lot of branches. So that wind is really, when the wind is strong like that, it is, it's just crazy. And you don't think, that's why people say like your barbecue pit and stuff like that. Like we had to lay that, lay all of that stuff down because the wind will literally pick stuff up and move it to a whole new place for you, okay? You don't have to move it. The wind will pick it up and it will move it. And it's just, I've never seen that happen. And to, well, I take that back. I'll take that back. Now, in Japan, we stay in Okinawa and they have what were called typhoons, okay? I'm talking 140 mile wind per hour, but this is, this is what I noticed about Japan. When I tell you the way they built those homes and the structure, for some odd reason, y'all, I was with all the different typhoons that we had. We never had to evacuate. It was like an island. But it was, just, I always felt just like safe because when you see them build a home, like they, the structure, like they went down deep in the ground and it was like cement. And it was like, even with those 110 and 20 and 30 degree miles per hour, I, I never felt like, okay, we're about to be swept away. So yeah, the wind, the wind will do some, the wind will do some stuff. Um, so yeah, it's, it's like moving pots, putting things that you think will move down, uh, grills, you know, laying those down or putting them up. But yeah, and it's a lot of work to prep. And then it's a lot of work, you know, putting all of the stuff back as well. Okay, question. Should I reuse the soil I used to plant my lettuce in for my seeds, for my new lettuce? Okay, so King Tax Services, what did you plant your, like, did you have the sale trays? And the only reason why I'm asking, because a lot of times when I have the sale trays, I take the whole little transplant, we'll call it a transplant. I take the whole transplant and I just put it in the soil or I put it in the container. So it's no soil left for me. So tell me what did you plant the lettuce in? Or do you mean like the pot? Now, if you mean where you previously had your lettuce pot, this is what I always say, it depends. And I say that because if you had some type of disease or some type of fungus in the soil while you were growing it, no, don't reuse it. But if everything was okay, soil is good, um, then put some nutrients back in, in that soil and replant it. Because a lot of times we will reuse potting soil. We will just put some nutrients back into there and then we'll, we'll put some plants in there. As long as you didn't have like any type of fungus or any type of disease or any type of like pests like bur burying down in there, 
then yeah, I, I do. I reuse some of my potting soil as long as I didn't have any of those issues. Um, I will put some slow release fertilizer like the garden tone in there or um, when you're planting lettuce, you're mainly focusing on the nitrogen because it's a leafy green. So you can put something, you know, um, garden tone is fine, but there was a slow release fertilizer that specifically said for like herbs and lettuce or, and I forgot who the company was, but it was like an all natural organic um, fertilizer, but it was specifically for herbs and lettuces because we're not focusing on the flowering part. We are focusing on roots, but we're mainly, mainly focusing like, you know, the leafy green. So yeah, if, if you didn't have anything going on with your soil on that, absolutely. Just put you some slow release fertilizer um, back in there. Okay, yes, I love this community, Yankee Sister. Y'all y'all are what, the reason why I love coming on here, honey, I told my family, I said, look here now, we about to go live at six, so y'all got to get somewhere and sit down. <laughs> Um, I want to start green seed under covered patio and you, uh, um, and Betty, you probably can, you probably can just make sure, just keep an eye on it. I guarantee you, you'll know if it's too hot because you'll see like this little stalk pop up. And that means like a stalk that doesn't look like a green. That means it's going to seed, which means it's, it's going to be too hot. But, um, like I said, if you get like kind of morning sun and the sun is not beaming on it all day. Um, and it's kind of covered, then just try it out. Try a few seeds and, and see, because that'll let you know. Um, I think I put it up because for let, lettuce seeds for us, I start like closer to the end of August um, because lettuce doesn't take long for us. Now we're in zone 8B. It doesn't take long. And then it's like a, you know, most lettuces, you can start leafing off of it between 25 and 35 days um, if you just want to start leafing off of the outside of it. And then like for a full head, most of it is like 50 days. So I'll start, um, I actually am going to go ahead and start inside, harden it off, and then um, we'll start planting it. We're going to start our lettuces in some pots though because <laughs> my peppers are just like taking off. They are taking off y'all. Uh, yeah, Wilma, Wilma and Wilbur. <laughs> that she and I, and some of my plants I named too, and I talked to them just like you know. I'm like, don't start acting up. But yeah, they're the best. They are the best. Um, indoor plants. I y'all know I don't have as many as the garden, but I do have um, I do have some because they're good air filters, and so we have some. Not in every room, but um, I do have my fair share. Okay, I use the lettuce strip and flower beds outside. Yes, I see a fungus on the soil. Okay. Oh, you use them in the flower bed. So, did you put like garden soil down, King Tax Services 18? I see a fungus on the soil. I'm going to wait for you to answer that one. Like, did you put garden soil down? Because like in flower beds, you may want to what's called like rotate. Like you may want to rotate and try to grow it somewhere else. And that's what we do like a lot. Like with certain things, if there was a problem in that place, try rotating it and growing something else there and just rotate. If you have like if you have the space or if you have another if you have another place, try rotating it and growing somewhere else to see if that will help. Okay, let's see. I'm creating leaf mold to be added to my soil next spring. That's nice, Josie. That is nice. It adds nutrients and make the soil nice and area. I I have been reading about leaf mold as well, and we have so many leaves that fall, y'all. We got so many oak trees um, surrounding this area, and I try to save as much as I can. I keep saying that I'm going to get a... Uh, is it the leaf mulcher? I keep saying I'm going to get one and just use it as like mulch for the garden beds because we're, we have no choice but to mulch it because I don't think I showed y'all. Let me tell you, in the grass the other day, it was about seven slugs all together. I don't know if they had just hatched. I don't know if they were congregating, having a meeting. But if I put whole leaves as mulch right now, it's so humid here that the, it's just humid. It's, it's 
slugs and snails are one of our worst pests here. I, I'm just, I, I just, I don't understand. <laughs> okay, so that means you're getting uh, limbs, Yankee sister. I have a huge oak in the backyard that has already dropped huge limbs during the windstorm. I'm telling you, that wind is, is, is nothing to play with. So yes, please, please be safe and be careful. I kept shredded leaves from last year and still have a lot now for for now into the fall. I have used it in compost. Yep, in my compost and as mulch. Yes, yes, leaf mold. I'm definitely going to look into that. It could definitely uh, improve your soil as well. Okay, so you like the leaf shredder too? I, I really do. I really want to get it. I know I'm going to get some side eyes. I already know I'm going to get my roll eyes. and they, I know it. I know it. I know it. But it's okay. It's all right. It is okay because I'm going to have to explain why um, I need my leaves shredded up, you know? <laughs> I'm going to have to explain that. I'm and I can come up with some good ones, y'all. I'm telling you, I can come up with some good stuff. Um, garden soil, the flower bed pot. Okay, the flower bed pot only had lettuce in it that kind of sits on the deck rail. Okay, okay, so it's a pot then. So, yeah. If you see like a fungus or something that's not right, I would definitely suggest changing your soil. Okay, the, it was a, the pot. I would definitely suggest changing your soil to see if that would help. Um, yes, I saw the other day that you had like some deer just like in the backyard, like it wasn't nothing. <laughs> I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> but yeah, we have squirrels as well. The only, I tell people, the only reason why the squirrels don't really decimate um, our garden is because the acorn trees. Now, you will find acorns buried all over the place. But yeah, the acorn, you know, you just have to find the silver lining in it all. So I'm glad we have, because I, I really feel like, I see the squirrels every day just running along the fence. They will dig. Um, they do do that, but they're not as bad, but sometimes they can get a little out of control. Um, I haven't figured out if it was the, uh, if it was the squirrels or the birds that were messing with my tomatoes, um, groundhog rabbits. That's why I can't have an in-ground garden. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I get it. I get it. Unless you, unless now, wait a minute, King Tax Services 18, unless you make a nice little fence around it. That would be great. Yeah, you could do that. <laughs> Look, I'm like, yeah, you could just get you a space and then get you, you know, a nice little fence around it. Uh, possibly. That could possibly be. I think that will keep the rabbits out. Now, I do know that the deer can jump because we did have some that jumped in this yard. Um, but yeah. Yeah. I, I think maybe start off with just like a nice little, a nice little fenced off area. That'll keep a few things out. Now the groundhogs, I'm not, we don't, uh, we don't have those here. We have moles, but the groundhogs, I don't know how they do. Like, do they eat from underneath? Um, yes, Yankee sister, I am praying for you. I definitely understand. Yes, please prep and um, prepare. And I'm going to be like watching everything and, Seeing, but I'm hoping it'll just like go the other way, seriously. But yes, take care and we're definitely praying for you. And and again, reach out if you need anything, anything at all. But yeah, King Tax Services, you can definitely uh, think about a fence. Think about a nice fence. <laughs> just a fence around the garden portion. Okay. Okay, y'all. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. Yeah, we're all praying for Yankee Sister. So I am going to get ready to get off of here because um, I always say it's short. And y'all see how we started off with part five. Okay, so let's let's just recap real quick before I get off. Okay, so we're going to keep the five series up for a little while longer. So we wanted to do that because it was so many things that we're always throwing away. Okay, we're always throwing away, but we can start using some of those things to build our soil back up. And so what I did um, was I wanted to break it down into five parts because now as we are starting to cook in the kitchen and throw things away, we can start asking ourselves, can I use that in the garden? And some things that we talked about was coffee, 
Um, now I just do the regular coffee. I'm not sure about the, I'm not sure about the flavored coffee, but the regular coffee and then talk to your local coffee shop. Uh, so go back and watch that one because there's a couple little precautions in there. If you use coffee, we talked about eggshells. Um, we talked about bananas, but today, today, what I really, really, really wanted to talk to y'all about was something that we may do and we just pour it down the drain and that's like the water. And when I say the water is we are blanching a lot of our garden vegetables and then freezing them for the season. So what I do is I take the water that I've blanched the vegetables in, I let them cool off, and then I take that water and I go water my plants and my soil with because some of those nutrients have been leached out into the water and we can use that and we can build our soil with. Same thing with like pasta water. Like I'll take the pasta water after I've drained it and I will let that water cool off and I will use it to water my plants. It's just so many things that we just throw away that we can now start using to build the soil. Number one thing, y'all, the soil is the biggest thing that we want to try to build over time. Um, so just think about that. Go back and watch the other videos. And then if you have a question, just always reach out. Always reach out. Um, I think so, but my elephant ears are doing good. Love elephant ears. I love them. <laughs> okay, a gardening. Yes, watch the replays. It's five. It's a five-part series. And I know I didn't want to keep it too long. Um, that's why I divided it into five. But every time I get on here, y'all, we have so much fun. We do. We just have uh, so much fun. But yeah, coffee grains, King Tech Services, 18. And yes, the eggshells. And I'm glad that you said my grandma used to use eggshells because a lot of things that our parents and grandparents used to use and we didn't understand why, now as we are starting to garden, now you see why. Like, I can say for my grandmother, she, I never, I don't even think, we had like a hardware store, but it's not like the big box stores. So I don't remember her going to buy any like dry release fertilizer, like the fertilizer I use, the garden tone or the liquid, like I don't think she, I don't think she used any of that, but she did different things now that I think about it and I used to watch her, her she was doing that to build the soil. So like you said, like the eggshells, like the coffee, um, burying different things in the ground, that's what they were doing. I didn't know it then, but that's what they were doing. They were building the soil. They were putting those nutrients right back into the soil. Okay, I'm sorry, New uh, New Art Garden. I'm uh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I went all over that one. Okay, but Josie did say what leaf mold is. Leaf mold is just collecting moist leaves in large containers. I leave mine to the elements for months, and after that period, you just shred them in your hand. So it's kind of like just breaking down of the leaves. Yes, I'm so sorry about that. I just totally shoot, went over that one. Okay, yes, yes, yes. That water is liquid gold. Yeah, shower water too. Yeah, we have to think about those things. Okay, love to use eggshells for my garden. Yes, and um, I, I have a bag of eggshells now. We just put them through the food processor and we just go out there and just sprinkle them. We sprinkle them because they have so many nutrients in them. So thank you all for joining our five-part series. We are done. Again, I'm gonna keep those up. Um, for a little while longer so that if you want to go back and re-watch them, uh, you definitely can. Thank you again. And if y'all have any questions, if you want to talk about a topic, make sure that you reach out to me. Um, you can DM me on Instagram. You can email me, Anna at SouthernEntertaining.com. Uh, just reach out to me if it's something that you want to talk about because I'm quite sure if you have a question, a lot of other people are thinking the same question as well. And that's what we're here to do. We're here to talk about it and learn on this gardening journey. You all make sure you stay safe and be safe. Make sure you protect yourself while you're in the garden. And remember, join us every Monday at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time and every Friday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you're not on the text message, text the word Let's Grow, L E T S G R O W, to 474747. That's Let's Grow to 474747. So that way you'll be notified every time we go live. We have um, 
whenever we're having specials, whenever we have new courses dropping, new master classes, new uh, freebies. So make sure you text that and get on, also get on our email list. So with that said, thank you all again, and we will talk again soon. Y'all take care. Bye-bye.